Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Consider joining Discord as well. We are all hanging out over there. This video series is going to be about my course in C Sharp that I'm taking. And obviously I'm not going to copy everything from that course, but I'm going to use that as a platform for me to teach you guys uh, C Sharp. I know a lot of you want to know some basic stuff. I'm going to explain stuff as well as I can, and I'm going to go through a lot of things. But take this as more of a examples, kind of follow through, follow with me type uh, tutorial where I don't, I won't, might not be able to explain everything in the best of details because I don't, I'm not 100% sure on how stuff works myself. But I just want to take you through it, maybe do some examples with you so you know how things work and you get a feel for C Sharp. Then I suggest you get a book on C Sharp, which I'm also going to read, and .NET in general, ASP.NET and everything. Just do that and follow with that, and I'm sure you'll be an expert in no time. Step number one is to download Visual Studio. Go to their homepage, get Community 2019, since C Sharp .NET is a Microsoft framework, which is very cross-platform and is very nice kind of a, a uh, framework, kind of like Java, you know? And it's very dynamic and it runs on top of this garbage collector and everything so or this um, this platform so uh, yeah it's a very nice flexible language just go ahead and download community I already did it it's gonna ask you to install stuff and I'll show you that right now so once you start your installer you're gonna get stuff like this you just run that I already have everything done here it's gonna ask you to choose between different packages which you want to uh, which you want to install and there are a lot of different packages here and as soon as this is done we'll be able to get into that so now it's done since I already have stuff here for example if I want to install this you'll get an option like this you press install and it's gonna get things ready for you once things get ready <laughs> you'll get all the different options here what you want to do to work with C sharp is to press this dot net desktop development one you might also want ASP.NET Okay, more web focused. You'll probably want to add maybe, uh, I don't know, if you want mobile development, practice that later. You know, it's a good thing to add these packages now if you don't want to do that later. .NET cross-platform development as well. You can go ahead and click that in if you want. And once you've done that, you'll see your total space required and install while downloading, I guess, and install. And once that's done, you'll be ready to go. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to create this make guest game very simple version of it we're gonna install Visual Studio 2019 and since C Sharp is a part of is a Microsoft product uh, that's why we need that we're gonna create a project explain all the functions the structure of a very default uh, file that you get um, create variables with different variable types we're gonna explain those as well as well as I can create the main game loop so we're gonna talk about what a while loop is since we have to use this in this game. We're also going to talk about if statements and how to use that a little bit and explain how everything connects together. Hopefully you enjoy this. So once you have installed everything and you run it, you're going to get this screen. You want to go ahead and create a new project and this is where you choose what you want to do. I want to choose a console app.NET Core. That's what I want to do. .NET, ASP.NET, you're going to see a lot more .NET stuff. But just go ahead and press this .NET Core console app double click that go ahead and save this anywhere I might just save this on the examples let's go ahead and just add that to C sharp examples select folder and I'm gonna say examples whatever you want to do create that and then it's gonna create this beautiful project for you alright guys and girls once you get this screen you have your app running and you should be able to run this just directly and you'll get a little console right line which is which says hello world Boom. Okay, so it says hello world. Here you get some options where whatever, you can just ignore this if you want, doesn't matter. It said hello world, that's the important part. This program is going to be called guest number. Now, this guest number is part 1. The second version is going to be using classes and making a full-fledged game. Here we're just going to use very basic stuff and I'll try to explain stuff as well as I can as we go along. The first thing is these this console right line so in C sharp there are a lot of things you can do with console 
and it, the console basically is your console window. You can you can set the background color. Uh, you can clear it here. You can print to it. You can read from it. You can write a line. You can write one character. You can do a lot of things here, basically. All right. What we're going to be using mostly is going to be console write line. Now, this game is going to be very simple. I just switched my things up here. It's a very simple game. Um, basically, our steps are going to be like this. And to start this off, the first thing we need to do is to tell the user what we're doing. So we're going to say hello. Instead of hello world, we're going to say guessing game. Okay. And I'm going to make an extra new line here. So you can just add that new line within the string itself. And it will recognize that as a new line. Also, good to note is when you say write line, it will automatically add an extra new line after whatever you write in here. If you just said write, this new line will just give us a one new line. All right. Right line gives us two new lines here since I added this. Now we know what game we're playing. We need a Boolean value. Now a Boolean is either either true or false. It's a very simple variable type. These are variable types. And whatever is in within main is also what our uh, game or whatever our application is going to be. It's all contained within main. All right. Every application needs a main function. You don't have to care about all this right now. But this is what you want. And this the main is called a function as well. So I should have said that from the beginning. Class program. Have to think about that too much. That's what it's all contained within. This is the important part. It's going to look for a main function to start your program. The namespace is also important because that kind of kind of is like a big box where you put your program in. Different parts of your program that are within the same namespace will be able to access each other and, and grab stuff from each other. So that's a very good thing to know. All right. Once we get that out of the way, let's start off with the Boolean. So a Boolean is either true or false or zero or one. Uh, this is going to be called end game. And it's obviously going to be false at the start. So we'll initialize it as false. And C Sharp and Visual Studio are really nice. They tell you a lot of information about stuff. So you're never confused. Here it's going to say, oh, it's, it's uh, initialized and assigned, but it's never used. Well, that's cool, man. Chill X because we're going to use it right quick while it's something called a loop. And it kind of goes in circle within itself until we break it out. And the condition to break it out is going to be our end game. False. Now, just don't freak out over this. It's very English-like. Just think of it as speaking to your computer. So you're telling your computer, while end game, this end game variable, is false, keep doing this. And as soon as you notice that end game is not false anymore, break out of this while loop. And then we'll be out here. But it's going to keep chugging in here until this condition is met. While this condition is met. Basically, that's why it's called a while loop. And that is your stuff right there. This is, once we reach this point here, we're going to know our game is ended. So end game. That's that. So we're, in this video, we're just going to fix the structure in the next game. Or the next video, we're actually going to finish off the game. So that's how, that's how I just want to tell you that right now. But end game is a very important part of this structure. While we're running, all right, we also want to create something called a random value. So I'm just going to say random random equals new random. And this creates a seed for us. It creates a random, a variable that we can use to create random other values, all right, integers. And that brings me to the next variable type, which is called an int, integer. It's a 32-bit signed integer. You don't have to think too much about that, but basically it can go negative values and positive but you can't use decimals that's what integers are and this is going to be my guess guess number okay equals random dot here we go and we'll do random dot next <coughs> boom and it's going to give us a non-negative random integer okay and now you want to do from 1 to 100. So minimum value to a maximum value. This will give you a random value into this. All right. That's what we want. That's what we want. Um, we could actually put this. We can initialize random out here, but we can actually initialize that in here because we're only going to use this within our game. This you can think of as our game loop. All right. Main game loop. 
this is variables and so on there you go good just make sure to comment your code as well now you have your guessing number now we're going to do an int uh, number which is going to be the user's guess all right or we can just call this guess if you want to be extra careful user guess um, equals zero zero from the start nothing special um, and then we're going to tell the user what to do all right and i'm just going to copy that and paste that in there and i'm going to say make a guess like that and that will allow the user to make a guess and how do we get that into our user guess variable convert dot to int 32 console dot read line and then we want to say user guess equals convert okay so what this is going to do this is going to get a line from your keyboard and then it's going to convert that to a 32-bit integer which we want which we created here and we're going to put that into our user guess one thing i want to make a big note of is that we're not handling errors here if you're going to put in something that isn't an integer this is going to crash so you you need to make sure you're inputting the correct stuff into user guess all right we're going to handle all that stuff in the coming videos once you have the user guess everything is okay then we're going to make an if statement which is going to check this for uh, if it's lower or equal to and all that stuff, but we'll get to that later. That will be our structure in the next video I just want to write one more thing before we end this video before it gets too long here is I'm gonna say end of game Thanks for playing So we know where we are. All right end of game. Thanks for playing very simple um, But let's try this part out right quick uh, And then we're just gonna say if user guess equals zero and game equals true this is just a test this is just to see if we can end the game from within the while loop because it's going to continue chugging until we give it this end game set end game to true and this is an if statement obviously so we're just checking if this is true then we'll do this below and i'll make it a little easier for you i'll put these around it so that's how you're supposed to do it and then we'll set end game to true and we'll end the game. Let's run this and try before we end the video. Okay, so we got our output. Let's look at what we're coding. We got this output. We came down here in, into the while loop because it's asking me all this stuff. If I say 23, it's gonna keep going back up here since user guess was not zero. We'll keep working. We're gonna keep working. I'll give it another value, whatever. Uh, if I say zero, end of game, thanks for playing. Now let me demonstrate the error thing. It's going to wait for an integer here. If I write S, it's going to crash. And it's going to tell me that it crashed. Here. Input string was not in a correct format. So don't freak out if that happens. Then you know that you didn't input an integer like this wanted right here. Um, also, I'm, instead of right line, I'm going to do right. So I get the input on the same line. There you go, guys and girls. That's part one of this very simple guess number program in C Sharp. Hopefully you understood what was going on. I'll try to explain as well as I can. Thank you for watching. Check out the description box. Drop a like, subscribe, and join the Discord. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, right? Bye-bye.